Wow. All right, so we're gonna, we got a bonus feature here for all of you. So that's new, that's new on this is this. I wanna give you my thoughts on the uh, recent reveal. Their sales have been, you know, lacking to say the least. Uh, and I'm gonna put a chart here so you can see. Wow, look at that. You got a bonus feature only here on FNR. Never seen before. And that's uh, their CBO line. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. FNR here. I've got a great video for you today. I am uh, headed over to my local Harley dealer. They've got uh, the new CBO Blue Steel, and I've been wanting to look at this one CBO. Uh, and then we're gonna head over to another uh, Harley dealer, and they have the yellow CBO. So I'm gonna take you with me uh, and show you both of these bikes. Uh, but before I do, I'm FNR, AKA Fly and Ride. On this channel, I focus on motor vlogs, ride videos, ride reviews on my 2020 Street Glide CBO. Uh, reason why I'm not on the bike right now is because uh, it is, uh, let's see, uh, a fresh 15 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And uh, we literally just had a blizzard. So uh, I'm not gonna be riding uh, my motorcycle for a while, uh, but I, I still am committed to bringing you at minimum one video a week on the channel that it is related either to, of course, my motorcycle, riding my motorcycle, upgrading things on my motorcycle, or if we can't do that, uh, the channel is Fly and Ride. I fly a DJI Mavic 2 drone, and uh, I typically take the drone with me just about everywhere I go, showing you all of the great places uh, across uh, the state of New Jersey and others from time to time. So uh, do me a favor, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell notification so you can be reminded of future content. The other thing I wanna do as uh, I'm driving to the dealer, I wanna give you my thoughts on the uh, recent reveal that Harley had, uh, was it last week? I think it was last Wednesday or last Tuesday. Uh, where uh, they showed uh, all of the new bikes, I should say all of the newer bikes, uh, and all of the announcements. Now look, this is not gonna be an in-depth uh, review of that uh, reveal. There's been hundreds of, video, uh, of videos literally on these topics and by some very reputable YouTubers, uh, some of which I follow, and they've done a really, really nice job of uh, giving uh, their overall impressions. But I did wanna share uh, my thoughts here real quickly as, uh, as I'm driving you to check out these new bikes. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do in this video is after I show you these bikes, uh, I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to give you my, uh, my real-time impressions of what I think about these new colors. And the other thing that I'm going to do, which uh, I mentioned in my last video, and I'm going to leave it up here somewhere uh, if you haven't seen that video so you can check it out. I'm going to share with all of you my plans for my 20 Treat Light CVO. So you're going to want to stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it. So. Uh, uh, stick around. So, my uh, overall impressions of what I thought about the reveal. I'm going to summarize it into three things that I thought they did incredibly well. Uh, and the one area that I thought was lacking. Again, this is my humble opinion. Uh, I'll start by saying that uh, I thought that uh, Harley did an extraordinary job uh, building momentum, you know, building interest, you know, leveraging a multifaceted marketing approach. Uh, to build this overall sense of excitement uh, across the Harley community. I felt it, uh, despite the fact that uh, we all sort of knew what was coming, uh, I was genuinely excited, I was looking forward to it. Uh, so again, I thought they did an overall awesome job building up to it uh, in their approach. So here's the first thing I thought they did incredibly well. The introduction essentially of a production bagger concept uh, with the STs, I think is just fantastic. They've been listening to their clients, they've been listening to the feedback. Uh, it's obvious and great on them for, you know, coming out with this platform uh, that frankly uh, will give, you know, future buyers uh, a lot of options to either, you know, have an entry level powerful bike as they come with the 117s or start to build it like you're seeing in some of these builds online. So that's the first thing that I thought they did incredibly well. The second thing that I thought was done incredibly well was obviously the Lowrider S, which is a very, very popular bike for them. You know, the fact that they've now made that a mini bagger uh, and they're making it with the 117s. Uh, again, I think it's gonna dramatically expand, you know, the potential buyers for this particular bike. 
Uh, and frankly, you know, I think the other reason they did this that I thought was really important and strategic on their part, I don't know if uh, you've seen or know, uh, but uh, since since that CEO took over, you know, he put together a, uh, a five-year turnaround uh, strategy and plan to essentially turn uh, the company around. Their sales have been, you know, lacking to say the least. Uh, and I'm gonna put a chart here so you can see you know, how you see the units, uh, frankly, across North America and then overseas, sales overall have been going down. You can tell by the number of bikes that they're selling year over year. There's a lot of reasons for that, but uh, their CEO uh, and their team put together uh, a five-year strategy. I, I think it's called Hotwire, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what they called their turnaround. Uh, and again, I think what you see, what you saw in the reveal from my point of view uh, is not only them listening to their clients, but it's also them executing on this five-year strategy to get more people to buy these bikes. Uh, and that's why um, I thought they did a great job on it. Uh, the third thing, the third thing that I thought they did really well is they took their 117 platform, uh, which typically you would have seen on CVOs, and they've now expanded that across many of their bikes. So you can get it on the Lowrider S, you can get it on the STs, uh, you know, frankly, it just gives a lot more options to get this higher displacement engine, which frankly sets the stage, I think, uh, in the future as they go up in displacement, you know, these bikes will eventually have uh, access to these larger displacement engines, which again, I think is a great, um, uh, is a great approach. And I think it'll, it'll go over well uh, and tied to this uh, strategy that I talked about for the five years. So look, those are the three things uh, that I thought uh, they did extremely well. Here's the one area that I thought could have gone better and that uh, their CVO line. Now, as I talked to you about this area of opportunity that I thought was an area of opportunity, I'm actually headed to see these new CVOs because I like the color on this particular bike that I want to see. Uh, however, you know, all they really did with the CVO, at least this year, as you saw, is they changed the colors. Uh, and while I like this one particular color, I am personally uh, not a fan of uh, most of the new colors that they came out with. You know, they've done, they've done flames in the past. They've done orange in the past. Uh, certainly they've done the battleship or gunship gray in the past. Uh, they did that in 2018 on the CVO and now they brought that back here. Uh, so, so again, uh, this is the one area that I just thought uh, was lacking. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be uh, their top of the line motorcycle. Uh, and uh, to those that have purchased CVOs in the past uh, and were expecting for more dramatic changes, uh, I thought was uh, uh, a letdown to say the least. Uh, and we would have loved to have seen just a higher displacement engine, a minimum of 122. There was even talks about a 131, which would have been, I think, really, really awesome. Uh, so, so that was the one area that I thought was, uh, was lacking. Now again, look, I'm sure they had lots of reasons to do it. As a matter of fact, uh, they, they teased uh, this notion that, uh, you know, next year is their 120th anniversary. Uh, and what I think they're going to do is they're going to sort of build up to that, uh, use a lot of that marketing approach that they used th this year to build a lot of excitement. Uh, and maybe next year, CBOs will see a much uh, higher displacement engine. So uh, again, look, overall, I thought it was a great event. Uh, I thought uh, they did an awesome, awesome job uh, all the way around. Uh, and, um, you know, here I am uh, headed to the dealer uh, to go check out albeit just a new color, uh, but I'm headed there now, uh, and, um, and I'm gonna show you these bikes uh, uh, as soon as we get there. So, uh, so look, that's, that's my overall impressions. Again, uh, you know, not an in-depth, just my humble opinion. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, you know, do you agree with uh, my thoughts? Uh, do you have a different uh, perspective? You know, are there things that you know that I may be missing? Uh, I'd love to hear uh, your perspective and uh, your point of view. I think as most of you know, if you're watching uh, this video and you're one of my current subscribers, first of all, thank you. But second of all, I respond to all of the comments, typically right away, if not certainly within the next, within uh, a 24 to 48 hour period. Uh, it's one of the parts that I enjoy most about this uh, motor vlogging community, the fact that we get to engage with so many people from all over the world. So uh, leave it down in the comments below. We'd love to know. Let's start a conversation about what you thought about this. Uh, and uh, you know what you think uh, will happen here in the near future. All right, so I'm almost at the dealer, so I'm gonna take you there now, and I'm gonna, and you're gonna see this uh, blue steel with me for the first time uh, here in a second. Let's go there now. All right, we're approaching the dealer right now. I've got Nadal and Nadal Jr. who are actually meeting me here. They wanted to come and uh, check out the bikes. They are uh, waiting for me now. Let's see how cool this uh, blue steel looks in person. That's how you park. 
What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing, brother? Good, it's good you to doing? see you, man. Good, good. good. You support Mr. Holy Shift, I see. Look at that. Look, Mr. Holy Shift. Look at that. And Psycho Fanatics. And Fly and Ride. We got it all. We got it all. So Nadal just told me that uh, they've got a 131 build there in the back. One in Gunship Gray. Is that the one? Yeah. All right. So we're going to, we got a bonus feature here for all of you. Let's see these bikes. All right. Howie's going to take us in the back here. Let's see. We got a bonus feature only here on FNR. Never seen before. Shoreline Harley Davidson, where they do all the work on their bikes. Check this place out. Holy smokes. Where's the rest? Where's the rest of it? Wow. <laughs> this is a 131 already in it? Yeah. Is this is this bike already sold or are you no? Wow, look at that. These are the parts. And uh, the handlebars, they to kind of come break them. Oh, they're going to they're going to power cut. Wow. Yeah, these the good thing about these guys and the guys in Lakewood is they make one custom bike for the guy that always wants to walk in there and say it's all done. Oh, uh, yeah, you can pick some I stuff like up. The gun trip great. Yeah, it's very like cool. So this yeah, is the, this is it already right there. Let me close in. Look at that stage 4. Yeah, thank you. We've intruded. <laughs> there it is. Were you open left? Yep, yesterday or you closed? No, they closed yesterday. There it is. Blue steel, right? Yeah. Look, that's all the same. Yeah, oh, so that's wow. so that's new. That's new. And this is this is the first year you guys come out with this black chrome, right? Or no? I think so. Yeah, yeah look at it. Oh, this is beautiful. It wow. Is beautiful. So let beautiful. me tell you, you have to see it in person to yeah, appreciate this. This right. is uh, oh, oh you cannot God. see this on any of the pictures. This black chrome is really really nice. Mm -hmm. And the blue, man. It is nice. It's almost like the vivid black. It's as far as styling. I mean, it's almost black. Yeah, the, the badging is really nice. They had these on one of the 2021s, if I remember correctly. I think they had it on the street bag. Yep, that's right. The white one. The white one, yep. So you were you weren't a fan of it. What do you think of it now? I, I am. It's different in person. It's different in person, right? It really is different in person, especially the black chrome. Yeah. That's something you can't get. On That's the beautiful. And That's beautiful. All right. So I just noticed this. You see this? The rim is the same color of the bike. That looks awesome. I want to take. I want to buy a set of spools. Beautiful. Beautiful bike. So we got all sorts of bonus features. This is the new Lowrider S 117, right? Correct. Gunship gray? Correct. What they did was they put the 117 logo and put the down here. Like That's right. They, they changed it up there, right? Look at that. I'm telling you. Yeah. Hey, hold on. Say, say that again. The more I look at it, the more I fall in love with it. Look at the shine on that. Come on. Bring your... Bring, bring, yeah. Bring yours in. Let's trade it in right now. I Come on. Let's do a deal work. right now. Come on. I just did all the work on mine. No, bring, trade your streak light in. You know, they make it as a streak light. <laughs> they do? With that color. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He said he's going to call me when he gets it. Get what, what color? It's that same color. one that comes in a streak light. Yeah. yeah. All right. So check. Let me show you this bike here real quick. So here it is. That's the new Lowrider S. I was just talking about this uh, in the car. I had no idea that they uh, they had it here. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, so this is the 117, the Streaklight ST. I'll show you this here real quick. Check out the color of those rims. That's, yeah, it's the same thing as the Lowrider S. Yeah. I love this short fender. This looks the same, right? Nothing different there. 
So what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. This is the ST. We were also just talking about this. It's got the short bags. This is Vivid Black, right? All right, so I gave you lots of bonus features. I didn't realize they had so many bikes here at Shoreline Harley-Davidson. We're actually gonna head over to another dealer and show you the yellow one now, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. All right, so we're at Ocean Harley-Davidson. We're gonna check out this new, uh, this new yellow CDO. Hey, how you doing? Good. I actually see it already. Oh man, look at this. Oh my God, in person. Oh, if you're watching this video and you're even thinking about getting some of these bikes, you got to come out here and see these things in person because the, th this video does not do this justice. Wow. I know. Holy smokes. Wow. Wow. Oh, they have this listed for 48. Holy smokes. Does it have the same black chrome or is this is chrome? No, right? No, it might be. I yeah, can't tell. Like, it is. I don't know. No, I think this is regular chrome. This is regular chrome. It is. I like this badge. Wow. Yeah. Badge. I do like that. It's the 48. This is more fit. 48. Yeah, but it's got, it's got some stuff already there. What is it, huh? See the, the pricing on it? And no, the surcharge. 560 dealer setup. It's, it's more for that paint. For this yellow paint, is like three grand more than. So, does this have all the ready fees in it or no? Yeah, it has a, a, a radio, a APP. What's that? I don't know. And so, this eight. this price includes surcharge. It includes yeah. dealer setup fees. Yeah. Shop supplies. Uh, Shop supplies. Yeah, 16 bucks. Um, so, it's 48, 524 plus whatever the taxes are. Yeah. What do you all think? Let me know down in the comments below. Impressive. It really is. Yeah, it's just, it pops. It pops. It, it really so check this out. Even the ca even the calipers match the paint. And this this color scheme right there, man, it's just beautiful. Beautiful. Also, you know what? You know what's different? What? This is the stretch bags. Yeah. You That's like the difference. This, yeah, you yeah. like the stretch bags. I you do, like, like, the I do bags. like the stretch bags, yeah. It just brings out the whole... It, it brings it out, yeah. All right, check out this freaking Road King. This is a 131 custom build here at the dealer, and they have it here on display. Check this thing out. <laughs> Look what it says. Dirty Jersey. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, and it's not for sale. Oh, really? Where? Well, check this out. 131. This is the new uh, thrash and supply. It's got this shorty exhaust. The 131, 147 horsepower, 148 torque. That's those are some pretty pretty strong numbers. Now, well, this is the list. I'm gonna go slow here so you can see it of all the things that they've done with it. It shows 13,000 in terms of all the work that they've done to it. The stabilizer too, that's on all the Oh yeah, look at that. Like this guy thought about It's got a stabilizer. What's this called back here? I don't know. Wow, look at that. It's got the uh, the rotors in the back. How much did he put extra on it? 13,000. Wow. Beautiful build. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, of course, my... Uh, battery died on my GoPro so uh, I am uh, finishing up here on my phone let me tell you those bikes when you're seeing them there at the dealer in person it just makes dramatic dramatic difference like the the detail the the way the color shifts with the lights uh, the uh, the design uh, all of the little components to these uh, CBOs, this is when you go see them in person. This is how this is how at least you, you really start to appreciate how much goes into the detail of these CBOs. 
Uh, they really did a really, really nice job on both of these bikes. Uh, on all of the bikes that, that I showed you here in the video. So uh, do me a favor, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Uh, let me know your thoughts. So uh, I told you that I was gonna sort of wrap up this video letting you know uh, what I was gonna do with my 2020 CBO Street Glide. And uh, in full transparency, I have been considering, uh, you know, trading it in for the newer CBOs. Uh, again, if in fact, uh, it would have had a larger displacement uh, engine. Now, remember, that has nothing to do with what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. I get it. I get, I get the practicality of what most of the folks are saying online on why it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, you know, this is my personal choice, right? And, uh, you know, the beauty about this is uh, we, all make the re we all make decisions based on our reasoning, and that's, uh, that's what counts. Uh, so that said, you know, I was considering it. And, uh, you know, I, I pretty much had made my decision not to do that after the reveal, back to the point I just made earlier in the video, simply because it just didn't go with a larger displacement. I was not interested in, in uh, you know, dealing with the impacts that would come with trading in my bike, uh, essentially for a brand new paint job. But I will say this, after looking at this uh, steel blue in person, I'm telling you, there, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, everything about that and and what I what I didn't realize is one that they had this really unique black chrome look to it Which again the videos don't do it justice and I love the fact that they've painted the wheels the same color of the bike I love the short backs because you get to really appreciate the pipes uh, and what they've done with the black chrome I just loved everything about it. So uh, Look while I doubt that I'm gonna that it's gonna be enough to sway me uh, to trade in the guy at the dealer is going to call me when they when they bring the street light in so you're gonna to have to stay tuned for now uh, I am staying with mine uh, that's uh, that's the decision so far uh, but there is a possibility so look uh, you're gonna find out here uh, as I shared earlier uh, I update uh, videos weekly and uh, I uh, you know my commitment is that through these videos I will continue I will continue to keep all of you posted on uh, on my decisions but let me tell you about the plans that I have for the bike. Uh, you know, irrespective, right? This is what I plan to do to the bike uh, in the coming week, especially now since we've got blizzards and uh, 15 degree weather temperatures. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm, getting, that I'm uh, continuing to give you quality content, you know, in line with uh, what you wanna see. And frankly, you know, now that we're here, I'd love to get your feedback, uh, especially those that are watching now and those that watch regularly. You know, what kind of content uh, do you want to see? Uh, you know, give me some thoughts. Uh, I could, you know, if, if you've got a topic that you want me to talk about, uh, things you want to see, you know, places you want me to go with the drone, uh, you know, let me know. All right, so here are the plans for, uh, uh, for, my, uh, for my CBO currently. Um, I have a set of headers. All, this is all still under warranty. Uh, jackpot headers. I've got Chrome Works exhaust, four and a half, uh, four and a half inch. I've got the Screaming Eagle tuner. That's it. That's all the bike has. And as you've seen from uh, some of the other videos in the past, again, I'll link them up here if you haven't. Uh, we've done a bunch of stage twos on uh, a lot of our friends' bikes. And uh, I've ridden the bikes. You've seen the videos here, as I've shared earlier. And uh, I just think it's a dramatic, dramatic difference for what you're paying for these uh, stage twos. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's the next project that we're going to be doing on my bike. And uh, I'm gonna bring it all to you here. Heck, we might even do another live. So if you want another live, let me know down in the comments below, but I will definitely be doing a series of videos uh, documenting all of these upgrades. Uh, I will also let you know which ones I'm gonna go with because there's lots of options. Uh, so just make sure you come back to the channel. You're gonna wanna stay tuned. And I'm gonna share all of those details uh, here in the coming week. So, um, so look, that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm excited about it. Uh, you know, for now, that's the decision I'm going with. Uh, I am going to go see this uh, Street Glide in person once they have it in the dealer, the Steel Blue. And uh, again, I'll take you with me and uh, you'll get to hear my real-time impressions, you know, whether I decide to uh, trade this in or not, but it's, uh, it's highly unlikely at this point. Uh, but you just never know. You never know. And again, you're going to want to stick around uh, and stay tuned. So uh, do me a favor. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you like this content, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Also, remember to hit that uh, subscribe button. Would love to have you as the channel continues to grow. 
Uh, we just reached 1,200 subscribers. So thank you to all of you that have subscribed. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, means a lot to me that you're making a choice to, uh, to subscribe, watch the content, and, and ultimately uh, be engaged as we continue to grow the channel. So thank you. Uh, but we'd love to continue to grow the channel and uh, uh, really would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell notification so you can be reminded of content like this one in the future. All right, thanks for watching.